Hey, how's it going? So today I'm out here in North Taramara at the Sphinx Memorial and walking track. So there's a few places you can go from here. You can go all the way down to Bobbin Head, which is quite a nice area. And where I am is a good 40 or so minute drive from my place. And yes, there are trail runs which are closer, but this one is at a location which means quite a bit to me. So I went to school for well, the senior years of my schooling at uh, Karingai, back then it was Creative Arts High School, uh, just around the corner here at North Taramara. I was one of those creative kids that did singing, dancing, acting, all that sort of stuff, which could possibly explain why I still love to be creative and make videos. So many stairs. Oh God, I've got to come back up here later on. My legs are going to be destroyed. And today, it's actually Monday. I should be at work, but it's actually a public holiday. So yesterday was Australia Day, which is sort of a celebration of Originally, it was a celebration of the first fleet landing in Australia and Australia being colonized. Now, obviously, that's a bit of an annoying thing to say to the indigenous people, people who lived here for decades, thousands, thousands and thousands of years before white people even came here. They call it Invasion Day. I made it down the bottom. Now this is the Waramu track. Do I go to Bob and Head or do I go to St. Ives? Let's go to Bob and Head. I like that bit better. So there's been a bit of discussion in the last several years of cancelling Australia Day, moving it to a different date, making it have a different meaning. It seems like the government's not really going to do that so who knows what's going to happen but other events that used to happen on Australia Day like the radio station that I listened to Triple J they had their hottest 100 which would always be streamed on Australia Day they've moved that so that it is now never streamed on Australia Day in support of the idea that Australia Day the meaning of it needs to be changed. Now as with uh, a lot of off-road and bush running in Australia, you do have to be wary of the wildlife, especially uh, snakes, spiders, that sort of thing. These trails usually you're okay, but pays to be just a bit careful. Make sure you look where you run, Look where you're stepping. If you're jumping over a log, don't just land blindly. Try and see to make sure is there anything on the other side of it. But for the most part, snakes don't like vibration in the ground. So while you're doing trail running, you will be pounding the ground and sending vibrations. The snakes will hear that, they'll feel it. And they will feel it getting more and more intense as you get closer and closer and they will if they are on the trail they'll slither off because they don't want to be anywhere near that now if you ever were to be bitten by a spider or snake or whatever it's very useful to know some basic first aid on how to treat it so with any venomous insects or uh, spiders or snakes, you don't completely block the blood flow. But you want to wrap from the bite itself and then wrap up the limb so that you can reduce the amount of blood flowing through that section and as such reduce the venom, reduce the chance for the venom to go up to your heart. Whew. Three kilometers in and look at the view. Love this. Now, of course, I am doing trail running as practice for the next event that I have coming up. 
which is the six foot track marathon, which is a 45 kilometer ultra trail run. But then there is the possibility that it may not even be my next event. Due to the bushfire crisis, the bushfires going through Australia at the moment, there is a possibility that it could be canceled. That area, I believe, currently is actually closed off because of the bushfires. Not necessarily that they are still in that area, I'm not sure, but uh, partially because of the risks of falling trees, falling branches. So for the six foot track marathon, we're not going to know if it's cancelled until much closer to the event. Of course, they're at the moment, it's still a while away, it's still a month and a half away. So they're letting whatever recovery and um, all the bushfire efforts go through and be put out and be looked after first. They're not going to worry about confirming too early. Is it on? Is it not? But they have sent out an email just to say to people, look, there is a possibility that it could be cancelled. Just be aware. Aha! Boats! I think that means whew, that I'm getting close to the actual Bobbin Head National Park section. It is a great spot for a picnic down here. I have come here several times, driving, not running. It's also a very popular route to cycle down here, down the National Park section. I've never actually ridden it myself. I've always wanted to, just never gotten around to doing that ride yet. Just one little thing, if you are going to come and have a barbecue down here, uh, be very respectful. It's a National Park, so please don't litter. Please take all of your rubbish with you or put it in the designated bins provided. Of course that goes for anywhere. Never litter. It's just a horrible thing to do. And another little thing to be careful of is when you're barbecuing specifically here in Bobbin Head, uh, watch out for goannas. We had one time we were here with um, some high school friends and we were barbecuing and all of a sudden this goanna crept up behind us and stole some of the meat that we were cooking. So just, yeah, be very careful of the goannas. They have very sharp claws. They can and will attack you if you approach them. So if they come and try and steal your food, um, I don't know, throw some somewhere else so that it goes away from you or just uh, start stomping the ground or be careful. Don't approach them. Don't try and touch them or pick them up because they will scratch you and attack you as they say, do not approach the goannas. Going back, it's definitely tougher. Whew. But at least I sort of know the route now. I've seen all these little bits. Uh, hopefully that just makes it a little bit easier for me. And also I'm now passing back all the people that I came past on the way down. So it's nice to say a little hello to everyone who saw me running past them earlier on. Um, I am actually running on no energy intake today so far. So I haven't had any gels, I haven't had any breakfast, I haven't had anything in today so far. Uh, I don't think I will need to until I get to the top. We'll see how I go. I haven't got to the ascent yet. So I've got to get what, somewhere over there. We go up, 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 up. And I've reached that intersection where I was before. We're on the way over here. I came across the top part. Now I'm going to practice the idea of running through water and then having to keep running after that. As part of the six foot track marathon, there's a section of it where you have to run through a river. Uh, some years apparently you can. You may be able to get through there with your feet dry, but I'm going to practice running through the water, get used to it. So there wasn't nearly as much water as I thought there was going to be. It was quite shallow. And any, whoop, and any other watery sections where I could go around, uh, this time on my way back, I'm going to go through. Whoop, here's another watery bit.
Now, just from memory, I think this was my three kilometer marker when I was coming down. So that means I've only got 3K to go, which is good to know. Ah, ha, ha. So I stubbed my toe into a rock back there. Ooh, I heard a sort of rustling noise near me, sort of near my face. <laughs> it's probably just a lizard or something, noticing I was there and getting out of the way. But just made me jump a little bit, threw my foot forward, wasn't thinking properly. And uh, yeah, stubbed my toe. Hope it's not too badly damaged. I'm still running, of course, so I should be all right. And that's it. I'm back at the Sphinx Memorial. So this, where I started today, at the Sphinx Memorial, just a little quick background on it, was carved in the 20s by a digger, so a war veteran, and they were stationed in Egypt during World War I. They thought, you know, what wonderful architecture. So he came back here, and um, although he had a terminal illness, uh, he had gas inhalation from the war, uh, he decided in the last few years of his life to carve this out. So it took him a year and a half to carve out this Sphinx Memorial, but this now stands as a really nice and awesome Anzac monument. So it's got the 1914 to 1918 World War I, lest we forget our diggers or the war veterans, especially those from World War I, which this is commemorating. And another little bit of, a little tidbit of history uh, since my high school was just around the corner from here. Uh, when I was in high school, I actually came down here and played on Anzac Day, The Last Post. The Last Post is a really hard piece to play. I mean, sure, it's not particularly hard to learn, but it's just more the nerves of it. Um, and it does go really high up, but it is such a fantastic thing to be able to do. And it, you know, it, it helps us always remember the world wars, lest we forget, um, and really honor our war veterans. And this was my view when doing the last post. All right, let's just do the last little leg back up the hill, back to my car. Thanks for watching. If you want more swim, bike, run, and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.